Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Tillers Turf Talk. I hope you're all keeping really, really well. So last week, an extremely busy week as we were over in Germany installing a new hybrid pitch, uh, Tillers first European installation at the Deutsche Bank Park Stadium. And what a fabulous job that was. And if you look back at last week's video, take a look and you'll get a bit more detail and see what we did over there. And yeah, we've installed a pitch that's gonna do that magnificent stadium justice completely. So that was a great week, albeit a very, very busy one. What I wasn't prepared for was the journey home. And we landed in Birmingham Airport Friday evening, and I wasn't quite prepared for what for the, the rainfall we'd had in the UK. And yeah, challenging journey home. It took twice as long as normal, but it made me think just what an influence the weather can play on any kind of turf management. Um, not just you know on golf courses, on sports pitches, but also in turf production itself. And it's really, really important. I feel in all these situations to keep weather records just to check on patterns and what happens and rainfall figures and everything else and we've recently installed a new weather station to give us all this information and we've chosen this one this one's a Davis I believe it's a Vantage Pro and it's a great bit of kit it gives us all the, the wind speed as you can see we've got the, uh, the paddles at the top there so we can record all the usual things the wind speed the humidity temperatures rainfall everything else here and yeah, last few days we've had well over 100 millimetres of rain and it's been a brilliant machine to give us all the information, all the data that we need. But as with all things, we can access it everywhere. So even on our mobile phones, we can have a look and I don't know whether you can see it there, we get all the information there, it gives everything we need to need. So humidity, pressure, sunshine, hours, sunset times, um, hourly readings for rain, everything else. So. A fabulous piece of kit and one that we are really really pleased with and it's given us all the data we need all the information that we could ask for which is absolutely brilliant so like I say the rainfall I've never known anything like it probably in my in my life and certainly during my time at Tillers you know, I've never seen so much rainfall or certainly dealt with rainfall figures like this and yeah of course it's had some challenges but what it's made me think is even in not just commercial turf production but also in your own gardens if you're doing a lawn installation always try and get the drainage right and if you get the drainage right no problem at all no standing water now we know that grass doesn't like being stood in water and it will deteriorate very very rapidly so really important to get the drainage right it's much much easier to put water on than it is to take it off so thankfully at Tillers here down to the selection of the quality of the fields the beautiful sandy sandy loam soils that we have here the rainfall thankfully has not given us too many problems and bear in mind we're in the Trent Valley very high water table you know it, it is a challenge at times and yeah thankfully we seem to be getting through it and we're getting a few orders out and overall it's not inconveniences too much which is fabulous stuff so we'll just wander a little bit further and see what else we can find we've looked at a few different ways that we can be draining our sort of grass surfaces there and but it doesn't just stop there you know we can put all the fantastic drainage in but if we get that root zone wrong then we're only going to sort of increase the problems of uh, water infiltration. So if you're importing a, a root zone, for instance, for a sports stadium or a golf course, something like that, then it'll be blended to be a high sand content with the right particle sizes and infiltration rates. That's going to work really, really well. In a garden situation, you know, you can put all the drainage in. If you're going to put clay on top of it, then the water simply is not going to shed very well. So a good sandy loam topsoil, uh, similar to what we sell at Tillers here, will do the job absolutely perfectly for you. Uh, when it comes to depth, you know, I'd suggest a minimum of uh, sort of 6 inch, 150 mil um, upwards. And again, you'll get perfect percolation through there. And then it's down to the drainage system then to shed the water either into a soak away or, um, or off the site. So we're fortunate here at Tillers that we are on some very, very sandy soils anyway. So I'm in a greens field at the moment and we're growing on some of the sandiest loam soils um, that you'll find in the area. So beautiful growing medium turf here looking fabulous and certainly benefiting from the free draining nature of this soil so all fab stuff when it comes to drainage and letting water off your sports turf or your lawn surfaces there are a few sort of simple things you can do so even things like just sticking a fork in there make a few holes that can help just get it through the surface and um, if you're installing a new lawn then make sure you get your falls right and obviously falling in a house situation away from the house to shed the water to the back of the garden and not to the house itself and sort of risk any sort of dampness or other issues there. So these are one or two of the simple things you can do. You could also put in something like a gravel carpet or if you need to go a step further than that and particularly on sports surf surfaces where they put herringbone systems in and grid systems we can use drainage pipe like this here and 
if we look closely, this is actually perforated. So there are small perforations in there, which allow the water into the pipe. And then the sides of the pipe as well, it just helps to shed the water much, much quicker away to either a drain or a soak away, or ideally a ditch somewhere. It's a good, quick and easy way to do it. Uh, yes, it's a slightly more labour intensive work wise, but get drainage right and your turf or sports surface is going to benefit um, a million percent. So this is going to ensure the water's filtrating through nicely, the roots are following it down and we're not just sat wetting the surface with everything staying at the surface layer. So get your drainage right, get your topsoil right, get your root zone right and the grass will thrive from it. So like I say, been an incredibly wet time and a bit of forward planning is really going to help you in the future. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that quick video and with all the recent rainfall it seemed quite poignant that we would discuss weather and drainage and all those kind of things so just in summary really um, everything starts at the top so there's lots of ways you can negate any sort of drainage issues on your turf areas like I say whether that be sports field or a small garden um, it's all really important that we can shed that water so it really starts at the top so good sandy loam topsoil uh, would be a great place to start allows the water to filter out filter sideways and shed itself naturally. Uh, we're looking here at Tillers, we're on some beautiful free drain and sandy loam and we have fantastic infiltration right through the whole profile so it doesn't really give us too many problems here and beyond that then obviously you can look at things like a, a gravel carpet drainage the easiest and simplest way to shed the water is actually put a fall on your lawn but always make sure you're falling away from any kind of property uh, for obvious reasons and that's the most natural and simplest way to shed um, the water from your turf surface uh, beyond that, like I say, we're looking at things like, like I said, the gravel beds, and then even on a larger area where you need to shed the water and larger volumes of water quicker, then you may consider putting sort of a herringbone drainage system in using a pipe sort of similar to this. And if you look closer, you may find there are perforations in there. And anybody in the industry will know exactly the purpose of that. And the perforation is just small enough to not allow ingress of any sort of stones or soil, but does allow ingress of water. And obviously the pipe width then allows the water to drain freely away and into you know, a watercourse or a soak away uh, but again check regulations if you're going to be going into a watercourse so there's a few different ways that you can do it quite simply and effectively and if it's just small areas something as simple as a garden fork open up a few holes will certainly help so I hope you found it interesting and all I can do now is just close the video by thanking everybody for watching uh, please subscribe to Tillers Turf TV on YouTube if you haven't already uh, please continue to share, to like, to retweet um, again, have a look at last week's video over in Germany. I'm sure you'll find that interesting if you haven't watched it already. But in the meantime, have a fab weekend. We'll catch you next week. Cheers for now.